Oh hey, welcome! Everybody's got their own pet peeves with gaming. Maybe it's a certain art style or a genre? Maybe a toxic community or bad business practices? Or that thing where, all of a sudden, every game needs a survival crafting version of itself? But for me, that pet peeve is bad writing, which typically takes the form of bad dialogue. Let me paint a picture. In many games, there's this cool moment where the level opens up to some amazing spectacle. The last thing I want in these moments is for some goofball to pop up in the corner like, Holy cow, would you look at that? Ain't that something? You don't see that every day. I'm talking about the times when dialogue is actively ruining great artistry. The way I see it, dialogue is either a plus or a minus. Huge amounts of great work by artists can be muddled by lazily written dialogue. Dialogue should never be written without care and intention, as you risk detracting from the game with every line you write. It feels like there are some really interesting concepts that are just kind of laid out for you in a really uninteresting way. See, in this Destiny boss fight, Oryx is upset because you've killed his son, Crota. The visuals are on point. The voice acting is great. But why would he say that? Don't explain it to me. Just give me something that I can draw an inference from. I think Dark Souls does this very well. Here's a similar situation unfolding in Dark Souls 3. Minor spoilers for the Ashes of Ariandale DLC. Bring Frida to me, please. Fret not, Father. I will snuff out these ashes for good. A single pained scream delivered infinitely more emotion and an even stronger message than just saying, Ah, I'm angry. Dark Souls as a series manages to have a captivating world with fascinating lore, all with very limited dialogue. And that's because the dialogue is mostly anecdotes from specific characters. Lines that reflect the world, not describe it. They let you, the reader or listener, do some of the work. And I think that's what good writing should do. Nobody needs to come over your walkie and say, <sighs> Welcome to Dark Souls, Ashen One. Always watch your back out here. This is a dark place with monsters that want nothing more than to kill you up to death. These things can be inferred by just looking at the cover art. No, actually, I'd argue most people can deduce these things by reading the title of the game. They're things that don't need description beyond what the rest of the development team has already laid out for the player to experience. But in many games, these kinds of things are described to the players, which in the end only detracts from the already present writing ingrained in the construction of the game's world. Writing that you should let your player explore, not have some robot tell them about. Time and time again, concepts like camaraderie are told rather than demonstrated. Friendly NPCs don't feel like friends if they don't make sacrifices. Their heartfelt dialogue starts to feel like manipulation by a soulless employer who refuses to ever fight alongside you. See, BT's lines are believable because he's really putting it all on the line to protect you, and it makes you want to do the same for him. BT is literally a vehicle with AI, and yet he's miles more believable than these empty NPCs who feel like nothing more than a means of exposition. Titanfall 2's story is saved by BT and the incredible artistry of each and every area. But that doesn't mean the dialogue didn't try and ruin it. The factory level, for example, was full of creativity and just extremely memorable. But every time the resident bad guy would say something, it took me right out of it. I see you, pilot. I admire your perseverance. Rest assured, I will not excuse you. You have my word. Impressive pilot. You made it all this way alive. This is taking longer than expected. You should have died by now. Generic, arrogant one-liners don't make a bad guy interesting or intimidating. These kinds of empty threats just come off as pathetic. When a threat isn't backed by action or delivered by a deeply storied character, it just sounds like desperation. It works when Handsome Jack threatens you. For the first 70% of Borderlands 2, he's been completely dismissing you. He spends most of this game sitting in his office making small talk to his opposition out of sheer boredom. Hey kiddo, Jack here, president of Hyperion. Let me, let me explain how things work here. The Vault Hunters show up, Vault Hunter looks for the new vault, Vault Hunter gets killed by me. You see, you see the problem here? You're still alive. So if you could just do me a favor and off yourself, that'd be great. Thanks, Pumpkin. 
Hey, how did, how did buckles suck? How's your day been, buddy? We haven't really talked much since uh, I left you for dead. Hey, you think you'll freeze to death out there? No, probably not. Bandits will get you first. My day? Been pretty good. Just bought a pony made of diamonds. Sometimes I envy the bandits. You're so unburdened with things like intelligence, culture, morality, honor, ambition, good looks. I could go on, but I won't. But I could. Ah, dignity! I almost forgot to mention dignity! But that demeanor is slowly consumed with rage. He ends up inverting the bounty that he's placed on you, so that if any bandits kill you and deny Jack his revenge, they'll become wanted. All of the irony and sarcasm washes away, and somebody who once seemed charismatic is now reduced to a raving lunatic. It almost makes you feel bad, taking everything from a man and watching him collapse under the weight of his own neuroticism. And I think that's what makes Jack Black such a good villain. I think you should feel bad when you defeat a final boss. It should make you question your actions and your motives. What was the point? Who am I helping? Am I any different? Am I really a hero or just the new CEO of the same company? As much as I absolutely loved the Titanfall 2 campaign, I never felt any of that. It felt like every boss might as well have been a literal zombie, mindlessly compelled to do evil. Not an ounce of relatability or a single redeeming trait. So what is a player to do about this? Well, ideally, video game publishers and developers start putting some more budget towards writing. But until that happens, you're best off just shutting everybody up. I see our fearless leader Jack is looking for you. Charming fellow, isn't he? Spouts drivel about bringing peace to the frontier, then shoots unarmed men, women, and children like I was going out of style. Ah, I'm spouting exposition again, aren't I? Apologies! This obviously isn't always the answer. Some games have dialogue that plays too big of a role to appreciate them without it. Heck, even Titanfall 2 can't be fully appreciated this way, since you'd miss BT's lines. But most games out there have D-tier, supplementary, afterthought storylines that aren't worth hearing from an NPC. I'm not roasting games for having mediocre storylines, but that's just the nature of it. So you're better off in most games setting the bad dialogue aside. And in fact, the reason I'm making this video, I think these mediocre storylines are vastly enhanced when the dialogue is missing. It gives you the chance to observe the world and the events around you and try to understand the story on your own. Good writing should step back and give you just enough to work with to draw your own conclusions, which means that the next best thing to good writing in this case is no writing. It can be so interesting to explore a game setting on your own. Many games have a great world that tries too hard to explain itself. If you just let it fall silent, you might find an otherwise boring story quite captivating. Maybe this guy wants to kill me because of his disdain for cowboy hats. Whatever stupid reason I come up with will probably make for a more interesting story than is being conveyed in the dialogue. Or maybe you just can't stand how annoying and relatable and quippy and quirky and ironic a character is and so you don't ever want to know what he's saying for the rest of the game. Easy. Captions off. Dialogue volume, 0%. And just like that, I can retire my vomit bag and enjoy this game properly. Well, that's all I've got to say about that. How do you guys feel about video game writing and dialogue? Am I overreacting, or do you find it really underwhelming too? And do you think that's damaging to the rest of the game? I personally think it is, which is why dialogue volume goes to 0% the second I realize that that's the case. But that's just because I happen to be really annoyed by bad dialogue. I'm sure many of you guys out there put up with it just fine. Well, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Maybe it's a toxic community or bad business practices. Maybe an art style or a shirt. Dang it. Shirt. Well, that's all I've got to say about that. 